You spent weeks building an incredible 3D car picker. You found high quality car models, but there's one big problem you can solve. Lag. You've tried every optimization trick, but now you're left with only one solution you've avoided from the very beginning. Downgrading the asset's quality. So, what is the solution? In this video, we'll see why this is happening, and a powerful tool that can help you achieve smooth loading without losing that crisp high-res texture detail. Before diving into the video tutorial, if you are new to 3D web development or want to build a solid foundation, consider exploring my course, React 3 Fiber, the ultimate guide to 3D web development. A project-based course with everything you need to know and more to start creating professional 3D web experiences. This is our lovely project. We have a picker on the top right to switch between those two car models. If we try it, currently we have this model, if we switch to the second one, now the spinner froze. If you have anything else that is happening during the loading, it will just freeze the entire scene and your entire tab. But if we do it again, we switch to another model that was preloaded, it's not happening again. So the solution you can have in mind is to just preload at the very beginning. Well, this is a solution, but it comes with two problems. The first one, is that it's slower because you will need to download the full asset, load it and display it. So the time before someone sees something on your screen is longer and it's a poor experience. The second issue is that at the initial load, it's also freezing the screen. So you can display a spinner or you will have the same effect. It will freeze, then display the model. By the way, the term for this freeze is jank. So what is causing this issue? Let's run the profiler to see what is happening. We open the inspector tab. We go to performance. We reload. We hit the record button. Now we switch the model. It frees, so we will catch it. And we stop. And we have the total time of what happened. You can see here we have two, almost two seconds of scripting. Let's open the details. I can make it bigger. Call tree, scripting. Here, this is where most of the time is spent. Function call, loop. And what is taking the most time is text sub image 2D. This is what happened after the GPU decompress the texture used in this file and it sent it to the CPU. And because the CPU with JavaScript is single threaded, it will just freeze what you see on your screen. To diagnose our GLTF model, we can use a tool named gltf.report. Simply drag and drop your file. It will open a preview of your model and give you some details. So for example, this model once it's decompressed, when the textures are decompressed, it's taking 900 megabytes of RAM, of VRAM, almost one gigabyte. Let's open this tab here, and it's the details about the textures. What we can see is that our car model is composed of many textures, and they are in 4K resolution, so it's high resolution. The second information we get is that it's using PNG format, and the usage of VRAM is huge. For each texture, it's almost 100 megabytes. One quick solution would be to resize the texture to 2K resolution or smaller. This is a good starting point if the quality that you have after doing this resize is convenient for you. But in our case, we want to keep the high quality. You could also use a WebP format instead of PNG, so it would reduce the file size, but it won't impact the VRAM and also the decompression process. A solution is to use KTX textures. The main difference is that they are GPU texture, which means they stay compressed on the GPU and you won't have the send of data to the CPU. The second benefit is that it reduces a lot the memory usage. For example, if you are familiar with this issue on Safari iOS, this is because you are using too much VRAM and it will crash your tab. Switching to KTX texture can help with it. To transform our GLTF and to convert the texture into KTX2, we'll use the client from GLTF transform. To install it, we simply need to run that command in our terminal, and then we will be able to run GLTF transform commands. The one that will interest us is in the texture section, and we will run etc1s or uastc. 
The main difference is with ETC 1S, the quality is a bit lower, but the file size is lower and it takes even less VRAM. And the other one is UA STC that doesn't decrease the quality and still have the huge benefits of KTX texture. Let's try it. GLTF transform will use UA STC and then it's the input file. So it's public models free and I will start with the 1975 model and then the output models free 1975 but this time we'll name it underscore ktx2 dot glb if you have an issue like me telling you to upgrade your node.js version be sure to use one of the latest version so me i'm currently working on a project where i need to use the 16 which is not great nvm use 20 i will switch to the latest version and i run the command again now we have the ktx2 model here in our models so let's use it let's copy it and underscore ktx2 so we'll be able to test the two let's try to switch to the new one and it doesn't work let's see what we have go to console and it says us that we need to set ktx2 loader to get access to the loader we need here to use the parameters of use gltf or any use loader for um, react refiber so use draco we just keep undefined undefined this is what we were doing before so it's using the default value and then extend loader it's a function getting access to the loader first we need to create a ktx2 loader you can import it from three example and the add-ons then you need to call set transcoder path this one is from a cdn by poimondres then detect support and gl we get access to gl using use3 state.gl and then on our loader we use the method they were mentioning in their error set ktx2 loader of course you can find the full source code in the description let's try to change the model so this one is the default one we have the jank here it's freezing let's try with the other model you have the load and it never stopped and then it smoothly rendered the model perfect let's head back to gltf report to see the advantage of doing it so currently the vram is almost one gigabyte let's load the optimized model we reload and we drag and drop the model and this time you can see it's only 232 megabytes on my different tests usually i see a difference between 5 to 10 times smaller of the vram footprint if we look at the textures we are still using 4k texture but the footprint on vram is way smaller for each texture but as you can see the file of the glb currently is still as big as it was before Happily, it's not bigger, but it's not reducing the file size. Instead of just running the command to change the texture with GLTF transform, you can use the optimized one with input output, compress Draco, and texture compress, not WebP, we want to use KTX. So you can see the different values. Running optimize, we name it KTX2 optimized, and with texture compress, and let's say UASTC and we will have this error giving us all the different value we can use so we will use KTX2 and you can see all the different comments that are executed to compress our GLB model and to convert the textures once generated let's try it optimized save let's switch to it and it's still working perfectly by the way we didn't try the profiler so let's record, switch to optimized, stop it. We only have one second of scripting. Let's go to call tree. And you can see in function call in the loop, we don't have the same function name. We only have compressed text sub image 2D. And this one is very short compared to what we had. And the file size now is now four times smaller than what it was before. Still, it's big. But it's way better than 100 megabyte. If you don't like command line tools, you have glb.babylonpress.org that is leveraging GLTF transform CLI. On the bottom right, you have the options 
to switch the different textures. Then you can load the uncompressed model, adjust the different settings. This is what we were using, but you can use it directly visually. Adjust the texture resize the texture format, press R, reload, and it will generate the file directly in your browser. We have seen how to convert the texture already present inside our GLB files, but what if we have image that we want to convert to KTX2 textures? I prepared a floor component. This is the one you see here. It's using nice PBR textures. I found the texture files on ambient CG. I picked this nice marble. And to be friendly with my CPU GPU, I took the 2K textures. This is the code to load a texture. We are using use texture. We define the props, map, displacement map, normal map, roughness map, and we apply it onto a mesh tender material to generate our floor. This is the same example that you can find on React Refiber documentation. To convert our JPEG texture that we have here into KTX2, we will be using software created by Kronos Group. It's named KTX Software. To install it, head to the release section, go to KTX software release. Be sure to take the latest one. It should be the one on top. Crawl down and then you will see a download section. Here it is in the assets. So be sure to download the right one based on your device. For me, I'm using a M1 Max. It's Darwin ARM64. Then the documentation is not my favorite, but you have all the information you need to know how to convert your images. So there are different tools that it installed for us after downloading and installing the package. The two ones that will interest us is TOKTX and KTXSC. So TOKTX, its purpose is to create a KTX image from JPEG or PNG. Then you have a bunch of settings you can use to convert the image. This one is very useful for 3JS. If you don't use it, it will switch the verticality of your texture. Here is the final command I prepared. Be sure that you have the output and then the input. This is the opposite on GLTF transform. Then run it and it should generate you the KTX2 texture. But if you look at the file size, it's way too big. It says 0.8 megabyte while originally the JPEG file was only 5 megabytes. This is because this command generated the KTX2 with all the different variations that we had, without any compression. This time, we need to run KTX SC to super compress the image. You can look at the parameters and prepare the command, then enter. Now we have the UASTC version, which is only 4.5 megabytes, which is less than the original JPEG file. Then simply repeat the process for all the different textures. Let's try to replace our texture with the KTX2 version that we made. Save. And unfortunately, it's not working. Because use texture is not meant to load KTX2 file. Instead, there is another loader, which is named use KTX2. You can save. And here we are. We have our KTX2 texture loaded for our PBR floor. If you have any issue with use KTX2, be sure that you are using the latest version of 3JS and React Refiber. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button to help this channel be more visible to other creative developers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss my upcoming tutorials. If you want to continue your 3D web development journey, give a look to my course, link in the description, or watch one of my other videos like this one available here.